Hey there, welcome to DIY Comics FAQ. I'm GE Gallus and I'm here to answer all your questions about indie comics, graphic novels, web comics, zines, indie comics, self-publishing, storytelling, you name it. If you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe. Today I'm answering a question from Aiden Parr Writes at a bloke dyslexic on Twitter. They ask, I would love to write a graphic novel, but have the art skills of a five-year-old. How to improve drawing skills from absolute zero? So of course it's impossible to teach anyone how to draw from scratch in a 15 to 20 minute video. So I'm going to just try to lay out some basic ideas that will help you start some tips that I use all the time while I'm drawing that I've used for years. I'll just start out by saying you don't necessarily need to draw to be able to create a graphic novel. If you're a writer, you can always write a great graphic novel or comic book script and then hire an artist to draw your script. I would love to do a future episode talking more about hiring an artist if you're a comic book writer and how to work with a artist if you're not an artist and even if you're an artist and not a writer how to work with your writer um, but that's definitely very complex topics that I will need to cover in another episode. I also wanted to mention in this video that there is absolutely nothing wrong with drawing stick figures. A lot of people joke that they can't draw or that they can only draw stick figures as if that's a negative thing, but you can make some really amazing comics with stick figures. One of my favorite examples of this is Tom Gold. Tom Gold is obviously a very skilled and experienced illustrator and comic book writer. He often uses stick figures to make very complex and funny comic strips and graphic novels. So not to say that Tom Gould doesn't have skill, he's obviously very talented and skillful. So not just anybody can pick up a pencil and draw like Tom Gould, but I want people to realize that you can make something amazing with stick figures. Here's an example of one of Tom Gold's comic strips. So I just printed this out from his Twitter account. He shares a lot of his comic strips on his Twitter. And I'll include a link to his website in the description below for this episode. So I just wanted you to see that he used stick figures in this entire comic strip. And they're very, very simple. He's telling a really funny and complex story in just 12 panels. So I want to encourage you, if you can only draw stick figures, then go with it. Develop your stick figures. They can tell amazing stories. And definitely check out Tom Gould's art and books, and hopefully you can be inspired by him just like I am. Another thing I'd like to talk about is that drawing is a lot of practice makes perfect. You don't just wake up one day and discover that you're an amazing artist. Every single artist out there, no matter what kind of art they're doing, has developed their art over many years. So you just have to be persistent. You have to draw a lot and hopefully every time you draw you'll get a little bit better. Drawing is a muscle you have to practice and develop it over time. It's not just going to show up overnight. It's like practicing an instrument. I think a lot of people are under the misconception that artists are just good at drawing but Every artist has practiced for years and years and years to get to the point that they're at. Something that I mentioned in one of my very first episodes 
is figure drawing and figure drawing classes. If you want to draw human characters, then I definitely recommend finding a figure drawing class. So this means a class involving a live model who's usually nude. So you definitely need a certain maturity level for these types of classes, but it's a really great way to practice and free up yourself because some of these are only gesture drawings so you're doing a really quick drawing you're not laboring over the same drawing for hours and hours it kind of gives you freedom it gives you a chance to experiment so that's why i really highly recommend figure drawing classes or a figure drawing session even if you're just starting out it might just be a really great way to develop how you want to draw human figures. Going off of what I said before about practice makes perfect, you definitely need patience. You don't become a great artist overnight, so you can't get impatient with yourself. You can't get angry with yourself. You just have to realize it takes time to develop this skill and patience is the key so that you don't become stressed and you don't give up. I also really recommend not to compare yourself to other artists. This is a really easy way to get discouraged. Just be competitive with yourself. That just means looking back at your old drawings and see how much progress you've made. If you make a little progress every week, every day, then you're going to be really happy with your art instead of worrying that your art isn't as good as someone else's. So even if you don't like a drawing that you made, just hold on to it because it's great to go back and look at it and see how much you improved over time. Also, just always try to learn, grow, and improve. Art is not a stagnant thing. Learning to draw is not a stagnant thing. People who draw, people who paint, people who do creative things are always growing, they're always learning. You don't just one day reach a high level and plateau. Realize that drawing and art is a pursuit that never ends, or at least that's how I think of it. Not to say that you're never going to reach a good skill level. It's just that you're going to always be improving and don't be afraid to improve. In a moment, I'm going to show you some easy tricks to try to help you get started with drawing or at least give you an idea of how to take what you're looking at and turn it into a drawing. It's really important to be able to look at objects, look at people, and be able to transfer it to your illustration or your artwork. So observation is really important and I think that maybe a lot of beginner artists don't realize how important observation is. That's another reason why I encourage going to a figure drawing class or session because that really exercises your skills of observation. A really good tip is to break down everything into easy basic shapes. So when you're trying to draw anything, whether that's a human, an animal, an object, look at your subject and try to break it down into circles, triangles, lines, whatever shapes work for that. So I'm going to show you a few examples. Okay, the first example I'm going to show you is this rabbit. So I'm going to start by breaking up this rabbit into different shapes. I'm a little nervous about drawing like this on camera, but I'm going to do my best. Okay, so I'm going to start with the head of the rabbit, and it's kind of an oval shape. So I'm going to go make this oval. And then the ears are also kind of an oval shape. So I'm gonna do one ear and another ear. Okay, now I'm gonna look at the leg because this hind leg area is pretty big and noticeable. 
If you look at this rabbit, it's interesting because there's not that much space between the head and the hind leg. So you can kind of eyeball this, see where the head is. So I'm going to put the leg about here. I'm going to start the leg about there. So let's do... An... So there's the shape of the hind leg. And then you can also finish the rest of the leg with a very long oval. Now we can finish off the body. I'm going to start with the chest. See this chest is kind of making an oval shape this way that's separate from the rest of the body. So I'm going to go from under the head, under the chin and go towards the hind leg. And then I'm going to do the back. This is very round. So I'm going to go from the back of the bunny's head and around. Then you can start connecting things like this circle for the hind leg can connect with the oval here and here. And there are also some front legs hiding back here. So you can just make these some lines. And I'm going to just add a little bit of a tail back here. That looks surprisingly good. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to draw on camera like this. This is kind of my first time. Um, so I'm pretty pleased with the results. So this is a good way to start practicing drawing. Don't worry too much about the details at first. If you can break things down into simple shapes like this, you can go back later and add in the details. By the way, I should mention that the rabbit photo and the next photo both came from Wikimedia. Wikimedia is a great place to find free reference images that have no copyright issues. So for the next example, we're going to do something a little bit more difficult. So here's a greyhound. Everyone loves dogs. A lot of people want to draw dogs, so I thought it would be a good opportunity to show you how I would approach drawing a dog. So this dog has a lot more parts than the rabbit did, but I do always like to start at the head just because I find that's the easiest place to start. If you want to start somewhere else, that's fine too, but I have always have found that the head is the easiest place to start. So with the head, I'm going to break it into two parts. There's this part where the eyes are and then there's the snout. So let's start with a circle. So here we go. Here's the beginning of the head. And then the snout is kind of like an oval. Okay, and then let's do the ears. I'm just going to do two lines like this. You can always go back in and add more details later, obviously. There's definitely this neck that's pretty long. So I'm going to go from under the head, there's the neck, and then you can see that this top part of the front legs have an oval shape. So let's do an oval for the top part. And then probably two lines next to each other for this part here, and another oval for the paw. So two lines, they have pretty long legs, and then an oval here. Now I'm going to work on the belly area because that'll help me place the other front leg. So you can see how the belly kind of starts at this top part of the front leg. So I'm going to go about here and curve this up. Then I can work on the other front leg. So I'm going to put it about here and another oval. 
obviously if I was doing a much more detailed drawing, I would put in little toes and maybe shadows, but right now I'm just kind of trying to get the basic shape of this dog. Okay, I think I'm gonna do the back neck, so I have to do the back of the neck. The back of the neck seems to stop about where the front leg starts. And then I'm going to do the rest of the back. So this is gonna be a pretty long line. Kind of curve it around. Now I'm gonna do this hind leg. So I'm gonna start with another oval here. It's not a true oval. And this would actually go like that probably. And then if you look at this hind leg, it's kind of going this way and then straight down. So I'm gonna go like this. Okay, so here's the hind leg. I'm gonna go down a little bit there and then another oval for the paw. Then I'll do the tail, so this is a pretty squiggly tail. And there's another hind leg hiding back here. And another paw. This actually turned out better than I originally thought it was going to. It's maybe not my best dog, but you can at least see how I'm thinking about transferring this photograph to my drawing to break it up into different shapes. And you know, it's worth practicing this with different animals. You might look at a photograph and be like, that is way too hard for me to even try to draw. You can make it easier on yourself if you break it down like this into different shapes. Now I wanna talk a little bit about drawing humans. Of course, a human is a pretty complex thing to draw. It's taken me a long time to develop my sense of the human body. There are so many different elements that go into drawing a human. So it might be really helpful to look at a skeleton first and kind of see the structure of a human. A tip that has really helped me over the years is using the size of the head to figure out the size of the body. And what I mean by this is that I usually take my fingers and I see how big the head is and then I use it to count one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so a human is usually about five or six heads tall. So I use this all the time to help me with proportions. Another useful tip that I think about all the time, that I use all the time, is that the hand is about the same height as the head. So that also helps with proportions. As well as that the arm goes all the way down to the thigh. So that helps too, because you don't want too short arms and you don't want too long of arms. So figuring out where the hand is going to end helps with proportion as well. I got this image from a stock photo site. It's a photograph by Cotton Bro. So if you can't go to a class with live models or you need help outside of a class like that, it's really helpful to use Photographs of people in different poses. There are so many different websites you can get photos. If we use this photo of a real person, let's see if the head rule I talked about works. So we're going to use the height of her head. One, two, three, four, five. So yeah, a human is about five, maybe six heads tall. When I draw human characters, I often use a simple circle to start with the head and face. So here is the head. And then I'll take this height and go one, two, three, four. 
So that's about five heads tall. I like to use circles for the shoulders as well. That kind of helps to connect the neck to the head. So at about this third head mark is where the hips happen on a woman. So I usually start with kind of the armpit, go in and then out again, in and then out again. And then you can kind of make these ovals for the thighs. So one, two, And then you can use a similar shape for the rest of the legs. So this, this human figure is going to be more like six heads tall, which is probably my usual size. And then we can add feet. And then again, I use the size of the head to figure out where the elbow goes. And you can do an oval like this and like that. Another oval here, another oval there. And then the hands, we're just gonna do simple. Hands are very hard. I bet I could talk hours and hours about hands alone. So this is just a simple way to approach drawing a figure. I think I made her legs a little too thin. So definitely practice. I think that it's really helpful sometimes to just use a marker or a pen so you don't worry about erasing things over and over and redrawing them over and over. It's sometimes good to just practice using a pen or anything that doesn't erase so that you can just experiment. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you're practicing. So this is a good way to kind of loosen yourself up in a way because whatever you put down, you can't remove. So you just have to try to go at it and not worry about your mistakes. So it's totally great to make mistakes you should make mistakes because everyone learns from their mistakes and just practice 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 so i hope this video has been helpful to aiden and all of you out there who are just beginning to learn how to draw i hope you can take these tips and tricks and start practicing drawing yourself these are tips that i use that i've been using for years and years so it would be great if you could use these tips. If not, then find techniques that work for you. Every artist is different, so you have to just develop your own style, develop what tricks work for you. Another big thing is finding what tools work for you. So don't be afraid to experiment with different tools. You can always apply these tips to digital art as well. So I hope you'll take what you've learned from this episode and go practice your drawings. And if you like this episode and wanna see more examples, I'd be happy to do more episodes with my drawing tips. Do you have a question about making comics, writing a script, drawing and designing characters, self-publishing, printing your own zines? Whatever it is, please send me your questions. I am thrilled to answer them in a future episode. Just comment below or tweet me your questions at GE Gallus, which is G-E-G-A-L-L-A-S. I look forward to receiving your questions and can't wait to answer them. Want to support this channel? Do you like the videos that I'm making? Please, please subscribe below. It's one easy click away. It's free and you'll be helping me make more episodes. I post a new episode every Tuesdays and Thursdays, so you'll get notified whenever I post a new episode. That's it for now. See you next time.